The meeting is called to order and it is currently 535. Um, I don't have the minutes from the last meeting, but I think we all received those and I hope everyone has read them. I move that the, um, the, the minutes be approved, whatever they are. I second it. All in favor, someone seconded it. And all in favor, aye. 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 <laughs> There's Cyrus. Good. Hey. Oh, hi, sir. Oh. Hi, Cyrus. Hi, everyone. So, our next meeting should be August. I don't know if that's convenient for everyone. It is not for me at all, so I don't know. If we want to keep it on the 10th, or if you want to move it a week, or what you want to do. That's only three weeks from today, Marianne. It seems to me, unless something's vitally important, we might delay. Move it up another week, then? Whatever. Okay. What? Let others speak up. I'm not... I'm the newest member of the group. I'm the guy who should keep my mouth shut. But I'm a college professor. I don't know how to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> what did you do one thing? The, the 17th? August 17th? Is that okay for everybody? Uh, that, that's fine with me. Uh, I don't have anything I know of going on. I doubt there anything will come up. Okay, so we'll put August. That can be fine with Guy also. Okay. All right. Thank you. Is there old business that we should be discussing? I think there's quite a bit of old business. Wants to begin. anything to say. <laughs> so I know last time, Marianne, um, if, if I may chime in uh, quickly, uh, there was conversation about um, with uh, the discussions that the, the board has been having for the last year about um, uh, or longer about uh, district expansion and w when would be uh, an appropriate opportunity to start having those conversations. Of course, uh, the the commission was planning back in March to have a public meeting to discuss with uptown property owners um, about this. And um, we're in the same boat today, more or less, in my opinion, that we've been since March um, about what's the right time to move forward. I think at the last meeting, uh, John, you may correct me if I'm wrong, but I think your, your notion at least was that maybe right now is not it's not a, the right, you didn't, I don't think you felt it was the right time to move forward with um, uh, having those discussions, but. Absolutely not, not right now. I mean, property owners are all in distress, I'm sure. I agree with John, the V stick together. Absolutely. I do have some when I look at some of the things happening on Fort Street, which is in our district, I wish we had some say about that. This would give us some say if we had our district approval. Didn't understand anything you said, Marianne. What? I couldn't understand you. Understand? No, I didn't understand what you said. Okay. I was saying that I do have reservations with waiting because if we look at what's happening on Fort Street right now, historic buildings are being changed without any input from us at all. Like the pure oil station? I think we should be able to say something. Can we say something, Marianne, without having a public meeting? Um, I mean, I can know. our group, uh, the seven of us, say something that might impact that? 
I don't know the answer. I don't either. I really don't. What, what building are you talking about, Marianne? Um, have you driven down Fort Street lately? Not, well, the one, yeah. What, I mean, what, what happened to Cornwall Jewelers? How'd that happen? I can't hear you. I, Cornwall what? Jewelers. Cornwall. <laughs> Isn't that in, in the historic district? Oh, yes, it is. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I was like shocked when they destroyed that. I yeah. was too. I was too. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> No, and I, I don't know that that could be resurrected even. So that's I think, you know, Marianne, I believe that building was in the, his, the National Historic District, if I'm not mistaken. It, because it wasn't old enough, that district was written in the 1980s, but now that would be in the district. Because there aren't many of those little gas stations left. What's the background on that building? Do you can somebody fill me in? Uh, I, I know I've seen a handful of those uh, in the Columbus area. That same type of look. Is that a? Was that a? So pure. It's a pure. Pure. Oil. pure. Is it pure oil, or I got the wrong company? No, it it was a pure oil station, and uh, there's one in uh, Marietta that's a Wits. Uh, frozen custard if you go to it they have a little uh display on history of that building and pure oil as well it's really neat Cyrus. <laughs> but it was a historic building and it would have been included in the district had it been old enough but when that district was written in 1983 that little gas station wasn't old enough at the time that wasn't that wasn't part of the district then that building wasn't in the historic district? No. It wasn't 50 years oh. old. So, no, it wasn't. Because anything that was put on the National Register in 1983 had to be 50 years old. That's why we're trying to redo the district to include all these properties that didn't make it the first time around. But 83 is what? Almost 40 years ago. So a lot of things have changed and I don't have that information, but you know, if that's what you're saying and I'm fine with, let's just bulldoze it through and tell the city council to approve the new district. I don't give a hoot about public <laughs> influence. <laughs> I feel exactly like that. <laughs> what the heck? I, I love mean, that, John. <laughs> that, that was a, a travesty. I mean, when I saw all that happening uptown, but how in the world that ever happened? Right. I thought that was in the district. I didn't realize it wasn't. I mean, I didn't realize that was in the district, that building. And I'm surprised that the Cornwells didn't want to, you know, talk. Yeah. Do something, you know, appropriate to the uptown. That surprised me. But yeah. like you say, though, if, if that's going to happen, then make our proposal to city council and do it when we can't have. We can do it like a Zoom, have about 200 people on that uh, monitor. I feel that way in one mind. I definitely feel we should just do this and you know, so that we could have some say, because that's setting a precedent for anyone else who wants to change things. Well, I mean, it, if you look at it, and in thanks again to Paul, that is the uptown district now. That building is in the, you know, the downtown, uptown Athens district because of the recent zoning changes. And to have that happen uh, will inspire other people to totally ignore the historic nature of their buildings. <laughs> and do whatever they feel they want exactly. to. That was my thought too, John. Same thing. Well, what's the best way to deal with that? Get the new district approved. That really wasn't in the district. I'm amazed. Well, okay. it would have been had the district since 1983. 
but it hasn't been. That's why we're trying to make the changes to it. Okay. You know, Mary Ann Cyrus, what year would that building roughly have been, those pure oil stations? Uh, 1940s, I think. Okay. Does that sound right, Mary Ann? I don't think so, because that would have made it old. I was thinking it was a little bit before that, so that it wasn't 50 years old. Okay. I'm positive, though. I really don't know. Yeah. I've never looked into those. So. Yeah. But um, what else could we lose, though? I mean, that's just, and that's making a big change in the. Has, it, has anyone seen the plans for what they do intend to do with that building? It's going to be a taco bar. <laughs> yeah, it'll, it'll be a restaurant. Okay. Really? Yeah. Hey, John, I've got a question for you. John Valentour? Yes, sir. If um, if you're doing construction like that and there's no residential use, you need a state building permit, what do you need from the city of Athens? A zoning certificate. Okay. Now, does our brand new guy um, of zoning know that they got to look at us a little bit? I mean, that's the... that's seems to be where we drop i'm guessing that's where we drop the ball well you know what guy uh you're absolutely right and i think that hopefully down on our agenda can you hear me i got an unstable yes. that I is we've you, got, I, i've talked to him twice i've talked to him twice so far i've talked to the zoning officer twice about getting us on their list or on the applications so that we are part of the application process and he's been fine with everything but as soon as uh i started communicating with him all this other stuff happened and we can't we can't talk anymore now uh the the best thing we can do i think is uh and we can do this i think even on the zoom world and i i did i hope sent out all the information that i had compiled about how we can get our uh historic preservation review merged with the city permitting process so that it becomes more obvious and more important from the standpoint not only of uh, the zoning office but the citizens to realize that they have a commitment to the, to the historic preservation of structures in the districts. Um, it, I, the front yard setback, I guess, I don't know, they, they've got a zero now on that. Zero setback for that building. Yeah, that meets code, John. I'm sorry. Yeah, zero zero setback is the standard for uh, B two D and B and B three zones, or they're permitted by right. You know, it's an uptown district, pedestrian. Yeah. Paul Logue, my yes. question: Can you have a? I can't even think what the guy's name is. That is the code person anymore. But David Riggs. Why, yeah, why don't you have a quick conversation with him and find out? Um, what our system should be on that, what it is. Yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to do that. I think the, 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 the issue from David's perspective, and I don't, I'm, I'm not going to put words in his mouth, but I believe this situation would be um, that because the Historic Preservation Board does not have any development control from a review process, um, they can't, they can't tuck you, they can't require that anybody be, um, presenting before the historic preservation board, um, until that development review is part of, uh, part of our ordinances via city council. So council needs to adopt the uptown district as a historic board, historic zone. 
And once it is, um, then it would just tuck right in. And John's already done a lot of that research to figure out how, how that would happen. Uh, but it would, it would be part of the development review process, just like the planning commission often is, or the board of zoning appeals or a uh, shade tree commission or anything else. It can be done. And I don't think it's a, I don't, the building it into the development review is not a problem. It's, um, uh, what the preservation commission needs to do is get work with city council to get that designated, uh, as a legislative item. Again, it's what we've been talking about for two years now. Yeah. Yeah. How should we go about doing that? Should we each be contacting city council people? Or I think, oh, sir. Um, I think I would defer to the commission as to how to do that. I know uh, my, my recollection from the last, and we, we can check the minutes, but the last time uh, Chris, uh, Council Representative Chris Fall came, met with the Preservation Commission, uh, her recommendation was to make sure that uh, you've done outreach to the uh, uptown property owners to, to let them know. Uh, and um, uh, the, the preservation board has done a lot of that already. Uh, you know, when Keith Chapman was the, pre the chair and guy, I know they were meeting with uptown business owners and you, uh, the commission had several meetings uh, where business owners were invited to the, or excuse me, property owners as well as business owners were invited to discuss uh, what that means. And so you've already done a lot of that work um, and you were planning to have a kind of an open house back in March and then uh, we all got sent home. <laughs> so really Marianne, I would say moving forward is up to the is up to the preservation commission. Uh, if you wanted to have another additional um, if if you wanted to reach out um, to Chris Fall, by all means, you're welcome to do that as a member of the board. Um, of course, if you're just, you know, public records in sunshine would apply. So don't be meeting as a quorum or, or having discussions outside of the meeting, but uh, as a as a quorum. But otherwise, you're good. You can do that if you want. We can invite Chris to a meeting in, in, uh, in August if you'd prefer. Uh, you'll have a new member coming on board, uh, likely for that August meeting. Um, and you guys can discuss again. We could do that and just have everything ready to go at that point in time. And I know, I think John has the maps and things. And don't you, John? Yeah, I think um, the one thing I would recommend is um, perhaps is if. Um, uh, one or two people, and I don't mind being a part of that, to just kind of double check property by property where you think the lines should be. Um, it looked to me like it was, which it was uh, almost 100% to what you were talking, but I, I think there was one I noticed, at least one on uh, the west side of Congress Street. That I don't think was appropriate. It looked to me like it was just, it was an off-campus rental that was probably built about 20 years ago or so, um, and that was incorporated. And they're very close to the Beta Fraternity House, um, one or two houses north of that. Um, but I think maybe just double check those property lines of of uh, what what you all want incorporated in, and and um, once you have your map set, it's really just a question of requesting it to City Council and. Um, if they're willing to move forward, you're, they're willing to move forward. Hey, I, I, I'm disappointed we missed our chance with uh, the Cornwall project and the gas station. But um, I, I think if I believe that if we tried to ram this through while we're doing these Zoom meetings, um, we'll we'll have a lot of backlash from from business owners and building owners. That's my two cents. I'll go along with anything, but. Now, going back to the maps, Pam and I did some work on the maps, and I don't know if she gave you those new maps, John, or what? Sorry? I, in the, I'll look at the property that Paul was talking about. I know that uh, next to the Beta House was that uh, Spanish Revival kind of a building that we tried to incorporate in there, then Rose. Uh, and she she renovated it just the way I asked her to. I mean, yeah. 
that was falling down and she spent a huge amount of money. And I think that was the one that was, I think that's where the line got, is not accurate, John. I think that that's one of the ones that needs double checked to to make sure that you're catching the properties that you want and probably just uh, driving by to double check would be sufficient um, Mm -hmm. next time you're up in the uptown area. Or I can, we can see if it's on Google Earth, and I can, we can double check that way too. I can look at it. I mean, I've got it all here. And I'm, Pam and I did change some of those lines. Oh, you did? Yes. I didn't know about that. The last time we met, which was March, early March, February, something like that. <laughs> I don't know. Well, what that means is I don't know what the latest map looks like because I haven't seen anything. Yeah. Would you ask Pam if she still has that map, John? I uh, shall. Do, I can do that. I can ask. Pam. That might help. I'm not sure what properties we're talking about, but we the lines and took them out of the middle of the roads too. I know that so that we wouldn't be including streets in our district. So anyway, that'd be great. I'll try. What do you all think about this? Should we just try to go to maps and make sure council has them and explain what we're trying to do? Well, I think like Guy was saying that sometimes, you know, here we are, what are we we gonna do? We see buildings being destroyed that would have been in our district had the district been established, but it's not. <laughs> I know. So, but we can't establish it without talking to the property owner. So we're, we, and what are we supposed to do? I mean, I think some people, I mean, uh, it's unfortunate that uh, the Cornwall fella, I mean, I've worked with him and he doesn't give a hoot about nothing. I mean, I, I mean, about, I shouldn't say that this is on public TV. But in terms, he wants to build what works and makes things work, not necessarily related to whatever historic situations there might be involved. And uh, it's a shame we didn't get to be part of that because it is in the Uptown District and the Uptown District is being changed. So is the issue here. Uh, I'm of two minds of this. Guy made a very good point. I, I was coming around to the Marianne Reeves, John Bellictor point of view, which was the hell with them. Let's go forth and we'll talk to the city council and just try to ram the damn thing through. But then Guy made a very good point. And these are perilous times. And uh, these are, there are a lot of people uptown. Some of those property owners are literally have COVID-19. I know at least one it does. And uh, so these are unusual times to be trying to ram things through. Uh, so now I'm sort of coming around to Guy Phillips' point of view that, you know, as lamentable as it is, it's unlikely another building will be torn down in the next 30 days or 60 days. Although that may be wrong, you know, I don't know. So, but I agree with Rich. It just looks bad on our behalf if we try to shove this through while everyone is distracted with other things. I think now is the time for us to, uh, I don't know, be more cooperative, uh, even though it is really appealing to go ahead and shove it through now because obviously it's needed given what's happening to the gear oil station. I I don't know that I was thinking of shoving it through, but I was making all council members aware of what we're trying to do. And then hopefully when this is over, we can go to council for a vote and have the public invited as we were trying to do before. But I don't think all council members know what we're trying to do yet. Well, that makes sense. Get our ducks in a row now. Yes. Yes. Yeah, sorry. One option would be if... If, if any members of the commission are interested, if, by all means, you can request to be put on a city council committee agenda um, in August or September and have uh, one or two members uh, appear before council. It'll it'll be likely online like this is and um, uh, 
give a brief summary to to all the members of the committee or of the council um, what you're working on and try to get feedback on that and you know discuss discuss the the, the very thing you're talking about right now when's an appropriate time to move forward with this and let uh, at least let city you can better understand where city council's mind might be on it um, a couple of those members are there are several new members of city council that were sworn in uh, at the beginning of this year and uh, they may have a learning curve on this topic um, and so it'll be an opportunity to to discuss that and get them introduce yourselves to the board if, if many of them may be unaware of what you are working on and they're, they're likely are unaware of who are the members of the board as is. Um, and so I, I think that would be, that would be a good way to, th that, that to me is not, feels like it might be a, a, a smart way to do it. Um, and since you're just in committee, you're just having a discussion and getting a little bit of feedback. Could Marianne um, or John or Cyrus or any member of the board sit down and have coffee. I, I don't know whether this is allowed anymore or a drink or something with one or i know there's public records uh there are public meetings laws and all but one member of the board can certainly meet with one member of city council legally right no problem with that uh right. i used to be on the Athens school board boy and we, we got a lot of things done sort of informally quite within the the constraints of the law i used to work for the u.s congress that's the way we work there often uh wouldn't it a little bit of informal talk, and that's kind of in line with what Paul was saying, uh, to sort of set the groundwork, and if we find fierce opposition immediately from whoever we talk to, or if we find, let's go ahead, I mean, just get the feel of the land. Someone talk to uh, Chris, Paul, someone talk to XYZ, maybe someone talk to the mayor, I don't know who the, the, the powers to be should be. The, the city council is, seems like, the, isn't that where we go, Paul? I mean, the city council is ultimately the decision maker. Yeah, council and the mayor are, are uh, absolutely, they're the, the, key, the, the key deciders on all of these issues, absolutely. But, you know, Dr. Better, what they're gonna say is talk to the people. Yeah. They're all, gonna, they're all for, for this. They're all for historic preservation. I guarantee you. They're all, they're gonna like everything. They're gonna like the idea. They're gonna go talk to the business people where we got held up before. Yeah. Get there, far enough to get there. You talked to a bunch of them, but it didn't, I don't know if that was enough to satisfy them. Uh, they're not going to, they're politicians. They're not going to, uh, I mean, I, there's not one of them that's not going to like the concept that we're trying to present to the city in terms of preserving the uptown district and modifying the scope of the uptown, uptown district, basically, to include what is the uptown district now compared to what it used to be 25 years ago. And that's not John, one other, so one other option to yeah, your point. Go ahead. Sorry, guy. No. One other option might be to um, to create some to, to do a um, a virtual public uh, a virtual meeting and, and invite uptown uh, property owners to to attend it uh, to record some basic information. Uh, we could we can work with you to to do that. Um, uh with the maps and the documents and um some we, we've you were already planning to do like three to five minute presentations um to summarize the situation that can be done with that that well i don't want to i don't want to volunteer our government channel staff to do to do additional work i know they're working really hard coordinating a lot of <laughs> these type of meetings but we can I, I i'm pretty sure we can work with you all to put that together um, over the next 60 days or so, if you all wanted to, to do that. And then, you, so you've got some presentation materials that can be sent out to, to business owners and property owners, asking them to, to watch it and then giving them an opportunity for feedback. Uh, or we can host some sort of a, a meeting like this. And yeah, you might get 30 or 40 people on there and give them an opportunity to ask some questions. 
you're again you don't have to make any decisions today but those are things we can we can talk we can talk about or think you guys you all can think about i'm not prepared to make a decision on that today thank you the one thing we still can do is get together, and I don't know if you all received the information I sent out about the formatting of the pr process. And that's going to have to be part of uh, anybody that uh, we try to convince the, the district is worthy is, well, what's this going to happen? What's going to happen? We have to, I, and I don't think that this is not the wrong time, or it can't easily change all the, the codes, not the codes, but change the, uh, or and add to the codes, at least what, even for the national history, it doesn't even apply to what we're doing now, but we're, what we've already are in, entitled, or not entitled, but we're, we're already uh, um, required to review. We don't even have the paperwork for that, really. I mean, it's word of mouth. It's not written in the Athens applications for building permits anywhere that they have to present to us and what that means. And all those documents now would be the perfect time to get them infused into the city process because there's it would be i think easy if we could i mean it's not nothing's easy when you can't talk to people but it it could happen that easier communications between two people on the on a, on a telephone or an email than six or seven and then okay present this to council or make these changes to the applications for a zoning certificate. I don't know how that has to happen, Paul. Is that a, 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 a legal thing? I suppose it has to go through the the, the city uh, attorney's office. All these things need to be, at least, should be, and can be undertaken right now. In my opinion, because we're not affecting anything new. We're just trying to establish what we already have in the process. And I'll talk to anybody about it. The process. Well, it doesn't sound like there's unanimity on moving forward in a formal sense tonight. Guy made that point, and I'm sympathetic to what Guy said, uh, uh, although I'm so sympathetic to what John said, too. Uh, I just genuinely am uncertain, personally. Uh, we're also short of a board member right now, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So we are, it might be a little bit, it would be unfortunate, I think, for our board to vote something by a four to two vote or a four to one vote to move forward. That in itself creates a sense of division, a sense of doubt about whether it's a good process or not. That makes me a little bit skeptical about moving forward now, even though I'm very sympathetic to what Mary Ann and John uh, and, uh, had to say. Uh, and and uh, so I, I just don't know where we go from here. I don't either. I honestly don't. I, I think we need to keep doing our homework and getting things together. But um, I'm, I'm not sure what we can do until things somehow get back to some semblance of normal. You know, that's, that's difficult right now. There is disagreement, or not disagreement, but there's not uniformity on the, even the definition of this district at, right now, is there? I mean, John has a slightly different idea than you do, Marianne, and others too. 
And I'm not saying who's right or wrong, but at the very minimum, we ought to have that nailed. Well, the 1983 National Historic, the National Historic Places document listed the properties that were 50 years old and older and cohesive with each other. So that was done. It's never been done. We looked at it one time to do that, but it didn't happen. So what we've done in an overview, John did basically, an overview of the community and put the district where we thought it should be to have council approve our new district guide, our new district. So that's where we are at the National District Historic Places District ended in 1983 and to be property had to be 50 years old and older so that left out a lot of things that we would include today and of course we're changing the boundaries as well so 1983 is a long time ago to be looking at but john's done a lot of work and well, and, you know, even, Marianne, even if we don't try to modify the district, we should at least get our paperwork in order for right. the district we have. <laughs> we don't have that. We don't have guidelines. We don't have, and those are all part of the things we we're supposed to be doing, is establishing the guidelines for historic preservation in the district, which is the 1983 district. I'm saying, let's do that. And it can be easily shifted uh, or applied to the expanded district if it ever happens. And we don't need public approval to do that, to just get our, our um, paperwork, like I'm saying. Forget about expansion of the district, just let's work on getting, the, you know, whenever before, you know, and I was all fussed up about that when Keith said we're having a public meeting. Well, we can't just go in there and say you're going to have, they're going to want to know what do we have to do? What's it going to mean? What kind of applications? Whatever, what other steps are you going to have in this process? Those things we should have right now for the district that we have. Well, but they're well, not, they're not integrated into the city system yet. Even for the district we have, it's not established, the process. There's, so it, whenever something happens, like uh, the McBee building, we all of a sudden just go, burp, 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 and we, somebody tells us about it, and we approve it without ever having any formal written stuff. We don't have any certificate appropriateness. There isn't one. We haven't, we haven't developed one. John, I think you've got what it needs to issue. I've seen some of the work we pulled together and it looked good, I thought. Well, that's what we need to do. Go through all that. And I'll go to this, you know, I'll talk to Paul and I'll talk with the, the, you know, the code officer and uh, we can. I don't uh, meet with we can get these things on paper so people can say whenever we do expand the district, hopefully, well, what's, what do we need to do? Nothing different than you already do <laughs> if you're in the district. I mean, here, if you're in the historic district, the 1983 district, we're asking nothing more than what we already would require or what would already be required for the National Historic District. It would make people, it would make it easier for people to accept. But also for the paperwork, and it's basically what I did, John, those papers that I had were basically taken from other certified local governments and how they ran their communities. And you know, there are plenty of those, I think they're what, 70 or 80 something in Ohio. I did the same thing. I did the same thing, except I modified it, hopefully, to be more, um, more appropriate for Athens, Ohio, than maybe, you know. I thought we had all seen those. Haven't we, we all seen those, John? I thought we did. And we all approved them. 
can't hear you. Do we do we need a motion that uh, we put forth the the map to ourselves for and and we'll vote on it at the next uh, next our next meeting, whatever two or three three weeks from now. Sorry, I was muted. Uh, Guy, I don't believe you need a motion at this point. Um, but if you want to, if those are agenda items for next month, um, finalizing the map that you want to move forward with. And um, uh, John, I'm sure we can get some pretty close draft documents for um, uh, the code office. Typically, they create all of those documents once legislation is approved. But if we want to get some uh some pretty pretty good drafts out there just so um uh everybody can see what to expect i don't think th i think that's a good move as well and all of that can be brought forward at the next meeting and if you want to move it up to uh to council sure you as long as you have a you just need to do a, a, a vote at that time that sounds good good uh, and, uh, 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 Officer. And see if we, I mean, because they can't be overworked right now either, really, can they? I mean, I don't know. I mean, they, I don't know if they're going to work or they stay home. I don't know. There, there's yeah. always work to be done, John. I, I think we all, we all know no, how that, that works. Okay. <laughs> if, you're, if, you're, if you're not doing one thing, you're doing something different. I guess. Um, I have to say it might be a good time to try to get these things in the system somehow. No. If there's less, well, I don't know. I, I can't say that. And here, thing. Well, go ahead, Marianne. We're not going to go anywhere from here, I don't think. Anyway, try to get that back from Pete that we may change on. That might be helpful, John. I don't know. Save some time. Then next month, we will look at the people work that you've already done. I've seen a lot of it and it looks really good. And we need other things. Just go ahead. I didn't review it before this meeting. I should have, but I looked at it when you first sent it out and it looked great to me. Well, me I, I, I think it's going to work. I mean, maybe we need modifications, but it should work. I mean, and, and to start. <laughs> yeah. I think it's fine, John. I'll talk with Paul and I'll talk with the court officer and just see if we can refine that and put it on this big Athens, you know, you know, stationary and get somebody to review it and give that our give uh, their opinion in terms of the legal aspects of it. John, would you like me to set up a meeting with you and me and uh, David Riggs for uh, yes. either later this week or early next week? Sounds good. Okay. I can do that. Thanks, everybody. I mean, um, we have a direct email me. I'm fine. Okay. Um, thank you, everybody. This looks sounds good. And I think. Hey, what about? Um, I think that would cover new business unless there is any other new business. Marianne, do you have a copy of the agenda with you? I didn't get the agenda at all. Okay. Um, so the first item uh, on the agenda you just of old business you just covered that was the uh, uh, discussion about the uptown district. The second item that I that was put on the agenda for old business was an update on the the Mount Zion process. Okay. And I can give a very quick update on that for everybody. Thank you. Um, uh, as, as most of you are aware, the Mount Zion uh, Preservation Society has been working for the last year, um, for many years or several years now, to, to, to bring that building back into productive use. Uh, they received a grant last year, from which is uh, money that comes from the National uh, Endowment for the Arts, to do... Um, uh, what's called the Citizens Institute for Rural Design, which is a highly competitive national grant program to bring in um, uh, architects, planners, consultants to help to help with uh, a uniquely rural um, uh, either art or preservation issue. And Mount Zion was a 
um, was a, a was one that or received that award that grant last year. Uh, the consultants that were 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 working on that project um, have been doing a lot of work. Uh, I have access to some of that. I can share with you all. Uh, they've been meeting with the board and some of the stakeholders um, in the last several months. Uh, they, there's an architecture firm out of Washington, D.C. that's been active with this. And then there's a gentleman named Brent Legs, who is, a, who is an architect by trade, and I believe he is uh, on the faculty at the University of Maryland. Uh, he is also the founder and the executive director of, um, of uh, I believe it's called the National African American Historic Preservation Fund. Uh, fund or foundation, uh, which aims to raise um, money and then uh, distribute funds to um, uh, African-American historic, historic sites all over the U.S. Uh, Mr. Legs has been on several conference calls. Um, he, um, I had the opportunity to talk with him as well. Um, they are all very energized about this building and about the history of Mount Zion and um, a lot of what's going on in Athens. And so we've got um, the story that Mount Zion is telling um, and that is uh, getting out there, I think, is a, is a I think we can all agree is an incredibly important one, um, probably about as salient as it's ever been um, in Athens or anywhere else. And um, uh, they're moving forward and it's uh, it feels like it's really moving in a great direction. There's still, of course, funding issues uh, with the organization. Um, I assume they'll be working on that down the future. But. Uh, from a planning perspective, they're getting really close. Um, uh, as well as part of this, we the city did receive a uh, certified local government grant to assist with some of the architectural and design design and um, site investigations for that property to better understand the situ the issues with water and plumbing and all of those issues. But um, they're continuing to get they're continuing to get momentum and continuing to move forward. So um, it's really good to see. That, that's all I had to say on that, unless you have questions. Very good news. Yeah. So, I don't have the agenda, so what was next the agenda? So, the, the next item was new business, and that included membership. Uh, and I can give a very brief uh, information on that. As you're all aware, um, of course, uh, former chair uh, Keith Chapman resigned several months ago to focus on some other other um, uh, civic issues, civic engagements that he's interested in. Um, Mark Snyder uh, was recommended by the by some of the commission members to Mayor Patterson. Uh, Mayor Patterson was is fully supportive of Mr. Snyder being appointed to the the preservation board, and he is uh, uh, recommending uh, to city council um, that they give consent as well. Uh, I believe this will be on the agenda for the first council meeting in August, and I believe Mr. Snyder is uh, listening to this meeting. He is listed as an attendee for the meeting, but he's not a panelist yet. Um, so he's been uh, at least getting up to speed with uh, uh, what, what you all are talking about right now. And I believe he knows several of you, so. Um. And so I imagine he will be, I imagine he'll, he will be uh, an appointed member for the uh, August meeting. Very good. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. You're welcome. And, and, um, Thanks very much for bringing us that update about our new member, and um, I hope he is watching, and uh, you're going to be a real asset to the group. So thank you very much for um, agreeing to serve when asked. Thank you. Do we have other new business or announcements? There is no other new business on the agenda. Um, but of course, if anybody has it. And then the next item was announcements and updates, Marianne. Yes, okay. announcements and updates. Does anybody have any? Madam Chairman, Chairwoman, I move that we adjourn. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everybody. Good.